All right, everyone, welcome back. And this is the second part to the video looking at some abnormalities found in Bob Dylan's recent um, Shadows in the Night album. So one of the readers was kind enough to send me the 24-bit file to track number one. I'm a fool to watch you. And I have the 16-bit file ripped directly from the Bob Dylan CD for comparison. One of the things we need to do when we do these inversion null tests is to make sure that both samples are uh, time aligned. That is, each sample is starting exactly the same place so that when we overlay them, we won't be a sample or two off. So the best way to do that, I'm going to show you, or at least an easy way that I'm going to do that, is to look for some landmarks in the music itself. So let's look at the first note here. And right before the first note, we can see that there's this one sample area here that crosses over zero. So let's select that, that as our landmark. And everything in front of that, we're going to select out. And we are going to cut out so that that becomes the first uh, bit of our audio. OK. So make sure everything, OK, select it. OK, this is the 24-bit version. Let's do the 16-bit version now. Zoom in. Look for that first sample that crosses over landmark. Select everything else in front of it. Okay. Let's just make sure we got everything. No. Okay, everything. Edit. Cut. Okay. They are now both time aligned. Second thing we want to make sure that it's aligned is the amplitude so that one track is not relatively louder than the other. So let's do an amplitude statistic on 16 bits. Okay, we see that the average RMS on the 16-bit the 16 bit one is 23.69 left channel and 23. Sorry, 96 on the left channel and 25.19 negative 25.19 on the left on the right. Okay, let's do the same thing with the 24 bit version. Statistic, and it is 23.86 and minus 25.09. So what that basically shows us is that. This value here for the CD version was minus 25.19, and on the 24-bit version, it's minus 25.09. The CD version, therefore, is a little bit softer by exactly 0.1 dBs. So you go back to the CD version. Okay, let's do some conversion now so that we do all of this in high precision. So let's convert this 16 bits to 32 bits. Okay, and now let's amplify it by 0.1 dBs, just like that. Okay. All right. Now let's invert this 16-bit version, which has now been time aligned as well as volume aligned to be the same as the 24-bit. And then we put it into the clipboard. Now go back to 24, 24 bit version and do the next paste to see how much of a null we will achieve. There you go. Quite a significant null. Everything at least till 16 bits should be nulled out uh, at, at this point. The question is how much is there down at the 24, at the 17th to 24 bit region? Okay, let's just select most of this and let's take a look at the frequency analysis. Well, 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 look what happened. There's not even any noise down below the 16-bit noise floor. It, isn't that interesting? Let's see what the amplitude statistics say. Look at that. Minus 129, minus 130. <clears throat> so basically what this means is that there is nothing... There's no, essentially no difference 
below the usual 16-bit cutoff of 96 dB. You have to reach all the way down in the noise floor, down to like 130 dBs before anything is different. And this probably just represents a little bit of mathematical imprecision or rounding error. So ladies and gentlemen, what this basically means is that the 24-bit version from Quobuz of Bob Dylan's Shadows in the Night is actually a 16-bit source that they amplified by 0.1 dBs. Very, very disappointing. Again, you know, over the years we've seen questionable audio, um, but this is one of the first times I've seen a 24-bit audio that basically was just a mild adjustment to the underlying 16-bit one.